It's finally game week. Who's ready and who's not? And are Talia and the Terps ready to meet all the hype? We'll let you know right here. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. As always, thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate it. We always let you know. Of course, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we are brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. So Talia and the Terps are talking title. We'll explain all of it. Plus, it's the final week of training camp. By the way, who's coaching Michigan for the first three games? It's complicated. We'll let you know. And our Big Ten Top Ten, I'm going to rank the top ten storylines of the Big Ten going into week one of the season. You won't want to miss that. Hang around for that. Be sure to subscribe and follow Locked On Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. So finally, game week is here, everybody. We got Thursday night, Nebraska. Matt Rule going to make his debut with the Cornhuskers, and they're taking on Minnesota, 8 o'clock on Fox. And then Friday night, uh, Central Michigan at Michigan State, 7 o'clock on FS1. Skip ahead to Sunday here for just a moment. Northwestern Rutgers, that is a noontime, nationally televised game, only game in town on CBS, and, of course, everybody else plays on Saturday. So we got Big Ten football Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're good to go. It is a big first week, and we're very excited about it here. The summer is over. The season has started. And of all those games on Saturday, the Maryland Terps are taking on Towson. Now, look, I'll admit, that's not the most sexy matchup on the entire lineup of Big Ten games, but that is head coach Mike Loxley's alma mater going against uh, – his alma mater, and um, some things to work out in that football game for Maryland. He's brought in two offensive coordinators this year, Josh Gaddis uh, coming. He's been at Alabama, and he's been at Michigan and Miami. Kevin Sumlin, who, of course, was a consultant last year, just kind of hanging around in between gigs. He said, hey, why don't you just come on full-time, be a co-offensive coordinator with us this year. There are relationships for Years, so just bringing them all together. And of course, he was the former head coach at Houston, uh, Texas A&M, and Arizona as well. So Loxley, Gaddis, and Sumlin. That's a lot of offensive brain power right there. And they're going to make it work. And, of course, they're all going to focus their efforts on their quarterback, uh, Talia Tagovailoa, very uh, talented and veteran quarterback who's ready to step it up one more notch and make a serious run. The sky is the limit for him and this Maryland football team. Talia already has the school records for a completion percentage, passing yards, passing touchdowns. I guess he caught up to Boomer Esiason and Frank Reich already. Um, and a lot of uh, accolades for Loxley and the Terps as of late. He went 8-5 and five last year. The eight wins is the most wins since 2010. They had uh, back-to-back winning seasons for the first time in almost a decade. So things are going in the right direction. You throw in a uh, back-to-back bowl wins as well. That hasn't happened in a while. If they go three straight seasons with a winning record, it'll be the first time since 2001, 2002, and 2003. So it's been a minute since they've done it. I think they will do it, by the way. They easily will have a uh, barring injury, I should say easily. But easily will have a winning record this year. The question is, by how much? How many wins? Can they rack up? What kind of statement can they make here in 2023? You know, some coaches, unlike Mike Loxley, might hesitate to put so much coaching power on the staff because some coaches could be a little paranoid if things go wrong. You know, you don't don't want a bunch of guys that have been head coaches on your roster because they can easily replace you if a change is deemed necessary, if things don't go well. That's not the case here at Maryland. I think these guys all get along pretty well. And when you have an offensive-minded head coach and two experienced offensive coordinators like this, by the way, how does the decision-making work on that deal? Well, Loxley said he'll have final say, but he'll have input. 
But Gaddis is going to be the one calling the plays on Saturday. Uh, Sumlin will add his experience. And both Gaddis and Sumlin say, look, they've, they've all had relationships. They have known each other for a while. They, they have chemistry. And these men will make it work all together. Now, Sumlin also admits that it's kind of cool uh, from time to time. He can sit back and just listen to Loxley and Gaddis because, you know, they talk about how they did things back in the day when they were together at Alabama under Nick Saban and things always work there. So he's able to pick their brain on that a little bit as well. Gaddis is excited about his quarterback room and obviously uh, Talia's potential, especially if he can go back to what he was doing in 2021. The big question mark for this offense, however, and it is a big one. Don't let me just brush this under the rug here. Is the Terps offensive line. Only one starter returns from last year. That's not great. It's not great at all. Uh, and that's, you know, you just don't stick guys in the offensive line. They take time to gel. They got to play together as a unit. It's a, it's a tough position. So Loxley thinks they're going to be okay because they got a lot of guys in camp. They got a lot of guys that actually play. They had a lot of guys in rotation last year that maybe weren't necessarily starters. Um, he says right now in the final tuning of the season, his job is to find the best five guys. He thinks he's got 12 guys up front that can play and, and contribute and play winning football. Well, that's pretty good. So he feels he's got some depth right now. He's got to find the best five and put it all together. And now he won't say this, but I will. The first half of the schedule is the easy half of the season for Maryland. So they can get on a roll. And also while some teams are kind of going through summer camp or training camp and trying to get ready for that first big game, and trying to get everything buttoned up and try and be as close to midseason form as possible, you know, maybe Maryland doesn't have to be. Maybe Maryland could take a week or two into the season to keep figuring out things like their offensive line. Because uh, I said, you know, they got the Towson game starting off, and then they play Charlotte, another game they should not have too much trouble with. Virginia, MSU, and Indiana, uh, Michigan State and Indiana, that rounds out their top five. So you figure they could kind of mold and work things together in those first five games. And then uh, that's all before their October 7 game at number three, Ohio State. And right there, that's going to be the final exam real quick, right? It's going to be, all right, where are we? How are we doing? How do we think the rest of the season is going to look? How do we play at Ohio State after we've gone through these uh, first five games of the season? That is a quick, strong test to see where you're at. But, uh, you know, Loxley's ready for it. He's been there, and um, he likes he likes his team. One thing about them, though, they're 1-8 and eight in their last nine games against ranked opponents. And, of course, they've got them all. You know, they've got Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan, all part of that Big Ten East gauntlet on the schedule each and every year. Uh, but in short, under Loxley, Maryland is now – winning the football games it should be winning all right they're beating the lesser teams quote unquote the question is can they make the next step forward and beat some of the better teams and the better teams we just told you who they are you know he said um during his first four years at maryland that uh when guys would come around and start talking about winning championships and stuff he kind of would tap the brakes on that a little bit but he said, you know, let's just win a game first. Let's just win a half first. Let's see. But now he embraces it. He embraces the mindset. Let's go out there and get ourselves a championship. They're talking about it. And, of course, with quarterback Talia Tonga Boyola, uh, who, who has said two things recently, by the way. Um, the first one, remember, he told us that there was an SEC school that offered him a million and a half dollars to transfer. We don't know who it was. He wouldn't say who it was. But he's good. He's good. There are other teams that would like to have him, but he is comfortable at Maryland. He's been there several years and he wants to finish his legacy off at Maryland. And that's the other thing he talked about. He goes, look, he's not leaving Maryland until his feet touch the turf in Indianapolis, meaning he wants to play at the Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis in a Big Ten championship game for Maryland. He's a redshirt senior. There's no time like the present. So that's... Uh, that's where he's at. That's where his mindset is. But in order to do that, they are going to have to beat the big three in the division. 
Michigan, Ohio State, or Penn State, or at least win two out of the three games uh, when they play. Uh, Talia's numbers dropped off in one category that's kind of interesting just a bit from last year. His yards per pass attempt dipped down just a little bit. So they've been working on the long ball this summer. And their game plan really is just to pound it uh, on the ground. They've got a nice running back in, in Roman Hemby, a uh, big, strong running back. And then take their shots when necessary downfield. So that's, that's what they're working on, and that's what I think we're going to see uh, a lot of here in, uh, in the season. And, again, a lot of this depends on the development of the offensive line, which, by the way, allowed 43 sacks last year. That's the most in the Big Ten. That's not a category you want to lead. Plus, I wonder how much you're going to have to rely on Talia's legs uh, scrambling a little bit. And, you know, a running quarterback like that can be good, and sometimes that could be bad. So you don't want to get him hurt and exposed downfield. On the defensive side of the ball, Loxley and defensive coordinator Brian Williams, they have some concerns there too. We talk about the offensive line. they got some concerns with the defensive line as well. But they went to the transfer portal, got a lot of big, thick, beefy guys up front. It's hard to tell the defensive tackles from the defensive ends. They're just huge, huge guys. One positive note that does jump off the page, if you like stats, from 2021 to 2022, the points allowed per game by this Maryland defense. Two years ago, it was 38.8 points a game. It was high. They were giving up like a 40 spot every week. Last year, it was down to 25.7 points. So they're giving up 13 less points, basically two less touchdowns from two years ago to last year. And if they can continue that trend this year, the defense could be pretty formidable. Still a lot of work to do. Uh, they did give up 26 drives last year of 10 or may, more plays. So people were putting together long drives against them. Again, if they could get that defensive line short up with the bigger bodies and stop the run, maybe they can. But that was the most in the Big Ten, too. And that's another thing you don't want to you – know, that's going to wear your defense out. So that's a quick look on Talia and the Terps and maybe the Dark Horse team to keep an eye on this year in the Big Ten. Certainly would welcome your comments on Twitter at Talk Big Ten and also on YouTube. Who's coaching Michigan the first three games of the season? It's kind of convoluted and complicated. We'll make things simple for you and tell you. Plus, uh, later on, our Big Ten Top Ten storylines uh, going into week one of the Big Ten season. I'm kind of excited about this. We're all excited about the season. So we got all that uh, coming up right here on Locked On Big Ten. But uh, we are brought to you by a new sponsor here, a game changer that I'm excited about, Athletic Brewing Company. And much like Talia making some changes and big expectations for Maryland fans this year, Athletic Brewing is, uh, is completely changing the non-alcoholic beer game. In fact, they make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste really good. And, you know, like... Talia wants to be like his older brother and win championships in college football. Well, um, athletic brewing, they, they want to make some changes in the, in the, in the beer game as well. Uh, athletic brewing company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, uh, full flavored and well-crafted just like a full strength beer and you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. In fact, I did myself. I got, I got, a, I got some coming to the house. Can't wait. Probably this week. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. First-time customers can use the code LOCKEDON, and you get 15% off your first online order. That's code uh, locked on L O C K E D O N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Uh, near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. Athletic Brewing Company and athleticbrewing.com and near beer and exclusions and conditions apply. All right, so um, some things going on in Michigan I want to catch you up on. So uh, going into the weekend, we found out what Michigan is going to do with the three games that Jim Arbaugh will not be coaching due to 
his suspension for, uh, uh, well, self-suspension by Michigan regarding their situation with the NCAA and uh, alleged recruiting violations and whatnot. So he's going to be he's going to be suspended for the first three games of the season. Who's going to be the uh, the head coach during that time? Well, here's here's the rotation. Uh, DC Jesse Minter will be the game day coach for the season opener versus East Carolina on Saturday. Special teams coordinator and son Jay Harbaugh and running backs coach Mike Hart will split duties versus UNLV in week two. Each coach will coach a half. And offensive coordinator uh, Sharon Moore will coach versus Bowling Green on September 16th. So I think it's pretty cool. He's getting uh, Everybody's getting kind of a shot at it from his staff to put that on the resume. Plus, uh, Jim Harbaugh's 84-year-old father, Jack, uh, who was a long time uh, assistant back in the day under Bo? He's going to be an assistant head coach uh, for the for the three games as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Jack, Jack Harbaugh, assistant head coach for the next three games. I like that. And also, uh, their strength and conditioning coach Ben Herbert will also be associate head coach. So, that's the situation for the Jim Harbaugh suspension for the first three games of the season. Also, uh, speaking of game day. This is this was big news over the weekend. The Big Ten announced that it will make football availability reports uh, mandatory on game days this season, and they will be the only Power Five school that will do this. Now, the availability reports will uh, be due two hours before kickoff each and every week. Commissioner Tony Petiti, who's been on the job like all of 110 days now, making this change, he says it's all about transparency and the integrity of the game. He says this should help the conference monitor prohibited sports gambling among student athletes and the coaches. You know, the NFL issues uh, similar reports for sport. Well, they, they're, they're injury reports. They're similar. Uh, they use them for sports uh, betting and, of course, fantasy football lineups. So anyway, the Big Ten is going to be doing that. Um, and as you know, regarding sports gambling last week, was we talked about here on this podcast, uh, the NCAA suspended Iowa defensive tackle Noah Shannon for the season for his uh, acknowledged involvement in sports wagering. Now, whether he should be out for the whole season or not, Iowa thinks that that's um, – they're not saying he didn't do it. They're saying that's a bit steep, and they, of course, are appealing the decision. And then also, uh, let's talk about Nebraska first-year head coach Matt Rule. You know, his veteran players came up to him. They said, Coach – we're not interested in you coming in here and doing a big old rebuild. That's going to take three years. You know, we're not going to be here then we want to win now. So he said, cool. I like that idea. Let's try and win now. That's the message. That's the message they're embracing this season and things to watch out for this Nebraska team that we've talked about here, their quarterback, Jeff Sims, the transfer out of Georgia tech. If he can kind of cut down on some mistakes, got a lot of athletic ability, bright kid. And uh, we'll see how things go there at quarterback. They got kind of an old school roster there at Nebraska as well. They're carrying two fullbacks on the lineup, and their two tight ends are six five and six six, so they weigh two forty five and two fifty respectively. I mean, these are basketball players at tight end size wise. And the player I think you want to keep an eye on, is, and again, they open up Thursday night at Minnesota uh, on national TV. Billy Kemp. The fourth. He's a transfer. He's going to be in the slot. Small guy, 5'9, 180 pounds. Played five seasons at Virginia. Played 50 games for him. So he's got a lot of experience. Started 25 games, 192 catches, almost 1,800 yards in his career. And he returned punts all four years. That's a guy. Remember that. Where's number one? You'll see him, Billy Kemp, on, uh, on Thursday night as Nebraska opens up the season against Minnesota. I want to take this moment here to thank all of you for checking out Lockdown Big Ten and making us your first listen every day. Our Lockdown Big Ten roundtable with the other Lockdown hosts from the Big Ten, uh, the Ultimate College Football Preview, still available, still out there, still encourage you to watch it. It's still preseason, right, until we get through this week. It's still good. In the meantime, thank you to everybody out there who has subscribed. If you're checking us out, hit that little subs subscribe button. It's free. It just gets you locked into this show to join our club here of Big Ten people. Love having you on there. We got over 3,000 last week. Very excited about that. Um, in the meantime, the rest of you, no matter how you consume this, whether it be video or audio, 
please feel free to share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten. And I always ask you, if you know of another uh, Big Ten alum, or a family member, or a friend who just loves Big Ten, share us uh, with them, please. And we'll let's help this thing grow. That'll be great. We really appreciate that here on uh, Lockdown Big Ten. Coming up, our next weekly feature, it's our Big Ten Top Ten. Again, once the season starts, we'll come out on Mondays out of the weekend, observations, best plays, stats, right? You know, teams, scores, just kind of a hodgepodge of observations over the weekend. But what I want to do next is I want to rank the top 10 Big Ten storylines going into week one of the upcoming season. I want to share those with you as we continue right here on Lockdown Big Ten. And I also want to tell you about Game Time. This is a great app to help you get tickets to games, uh, concerts, any event that requires a ticket. You can get it. You download the Game Time app, and uh, it's very easy, and it helps you get tickets to anything. It's easy to find and buy tickets to all these events. The thing I like the best is it shows you an image of your view of the seat that you're buying. You're not going to have like a, a, a pole or a part of a building in your way. Uh, you'll know that in advance. Get great tickets, great seats that way. Their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. They all, it's, this is safe. This is easy to do. Game time is the place for last-minute ticket deals too. Here's another thing. If you're the guy that's in charge of getting tickets for the group, it can be stressful, but not with game time. And they let you do it, I mean, right up to the day of the game, if it last second stuff. Because a lot of times you do this stuff spontaneously you know, with your group of friends or family. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. It's all over. Anything you can think of, they have it. And it is the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps on the phone, and you're good to go. And the tickets are sent right to your phone. You don't have to dig through an email or anything like that. So you can get the uh, tickets without any stress at game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. So make sure you do that and uh, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, so I want to take a look at uh, this feature we're going to do here today, our Big Ten Top Ten. I'll tell you how it's going to work today. If you're listening on audio, I'm going to put these up one at a time and uh, I'll describe them so you don't feel left out if you're only on audio. This is how it looks on the video. We'll start from number 10, we'll move up. These are the top 10 storylines in the Big Ten going into the season, according to me. Uh, we'll always welcome your comments on Twitter at Talk Big Ten or comments on YouTube as well. So I'm going to put them up here on the screen. Start with number 10. Number 10 is the Northwestern story. Uh, Northwestern hitting rock bottom, obviously with coaching change and uh, all the hazing going on there. David Braun, the new young coach, is the, is the head coach thrust into this whole scene. We'll see how they do. We'll see if they can you know, win more than the one game that they won last year. I think that, yeah, I put that at number 10. At number nine, Brett Bielema and the Finding Illini. Can he sustain the success he has built there in his first couple of years? Of course, eight wins last year. And Luke Altmaier was just named the uh, starting quarterback. We'll see how they do. That is the ninth biggest storyline, according to me, going into week one of the Big Ten season. At number eight, I have Matt Rule, and how much of a sudden impact will he have in Nebraska? We just talked about him a moment ago. Is it going to take time, or are they going to start winning right away? That's going to be something fun to watch. There's a lot of enthusiasm at, at Nebraska. We've talked about them a lot here in the, in the preseason and in the summertime on this podcast. At number seven, storyline, Mel Tucker. Will he have a bounce back year at Michigan State after a disappointing year last year? They were riddled with injuries. They had some problems. Can they bounce back in a very competitive Big Ten? By the way, they have a quarterback battle still to iron out with Noah Kim and Kaiten Hauser as well. At number six, we spent a lot of time this summer talking about Cade McNamara and can he elevate Iowa? 
If you've watched me at all, you know my bottom line is he doesn't look, he doesn't have to be the hero like at Michigan where he got to the Big Ten title game and got to the college football playoffs and managed that offense and all that talent around him. He's got to come into Iowa. He's just got to be a little bit better just because they were so, they weren't that good offensively. They were great defensively. They weren't that good offensively. So if he can just come in and be okay, that's all they need. I think they can win a lot of football games at Iowa and maybe even get into the Big Ten championship game. All right, number five. Here's the other team that will probably compete with them in their division for the Big Ten championship game. Uh, it, it, but I, it's a storyline. Luke Fickle at number five. Does he have early success at Wisconsin? It's kind of the same storyline as Matt Rule and his impact in Nebraska. How quickly will these guys get their systems up and running and have that translate into winning football games? Fickle's going to come in there, and they're going with the air raid. This is a school that is used to big – Offensive linemen and big, strong running backs and power running games. Now they're going to do the air raid. I mean, years ago, we saw Rich Rodriguez try to do something in Michigan. Years ago, it was a disaster, but he didn't have the transfer portal. And you can quickly change your rosters like Luke Fickle can now. So that's uh, what I got at number five. At number four, uh, Talia, maybe a Heisman run at Maryland. Uh, dark horse. I'm going to make it a dark horse uh, thing here. Talia, maybe getting into the Heisman mix. I think he's going to have a big year. Lots of numbers. They're going to win some games. Obviously, we spent the first half of this podcast talking about them. At number three, uh, Penn State and their quarterback situation with Drew Aller. I only mention quarterback situations because they haven't named him the starter yet. <laughs> There's a freshman there that James Franklin really likes. I don't think he's going to start the fresh. I think, look, Drew Aller is going to be the guy. And once they make that announcement, this is going to be a fun year for Penn State. This is going to be a really fun year. I got them at number three. That's the storyline. Number two, the storyline, I have Jim Harbaugh and his suspension at Michigan, which we just discussed. And, of course, this team is loaded and can absolutely go all the way. So Michigan fans will just have to bear through the first three weeks. And then when Harbaugh comes back, hopefully for them, for you, it'll be business as usual. And the number one storyline, Ryan Day and the Ohio State quarterback situation, Kyle McCord, and, uh, of course, Devin, that, those two guys, they haven't, they haven't picked one yet. Once they do pick a quarterback, then that storyline is probably put to bed unless they're going to go back and forth. Maybe not. Maybe they will both play. Uh, but they're going to win a lot of football games at Ohio State. But that's the number one storyline, according to me, one through ten as I see it going into the first week of the Big Ten season. As always, I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Big Ten. You first listen every day, and you everydayers. Our next show will have more from camps. We'll count it down just days away from kickoff. It's a very exciting week. It's game week. You can get all the information right here on Lockdown Big Ten. And uh, also, still, uh, the Ultimate College Football Podcast is still, the preview is still out there that I did with my uh, Big Ten, Lockdown Big Ten colleagues. It's still good. It's a preseason preview. It's still preseason, barely. You still have time to check it out. Uh, many ways for you to interact with me. Many of you have been, of course, at uh, Twitter, at TalkBig10, of course, here on YouTube. Uh, all the comments that you guys have been giving me are, have been great. I've been getting back to as many as I can. Um, been staying after that. So I appreciate that. And one last time, I want to ask you, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's keep that number going up. We're over 3,000 thanks to you guys. And if you haven't done it yet, just click it. It's free. It's simple. And no matter how much you get this podcast, uh, share it, like it, and uh, send it to somebody you think would like this, and we can grow this, uh, this network as well. And uh, that way, uh, you'll get the latest uh, episode of this uh, Lockdown Big Ten podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. So that will do it. As always, enjoyed our uh, time here. And um, I can't wait till we do it again tomorrow. I'm Craig Scheman for Locked On Big Ten.